Mere hours after that raucous news conference at the White House, the president was on offense again, confirming another cabinet pick that had been on Senator Chuck Schumer's hit list for defeat. This time, the Senate confirmed Scott Pruitt to run the Environmental Protection Agency. But a Republican warned today that Pruitt is about to face nothing short of a bloodbath over at the EPA. Exaggeration? Not really. In an unprecedented show of defiance, hundreds of EPA bureaucrats had been lobbying the Senate to block the new boss from even getting the job. Why? Because they fear he's about to reverse years of their precious government regulations and may even be ready to eliminate a bunch of their taxpayer-funded jobs. Remember, the president warned yesterday about just this type of insurrection when he charged forces in the government were trying to wreck his presidency. I've also worked to install a cabinet over the delays and obstruction of Senate Democrats. You've seen what they've done over the last long number of years. That will be one of the great cabinets ever assembled in American history. Yeah. He wanted it, but we called, 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 called. They can't make a meeting with him. Every day I walk in, I said, I would like to meet with him because I do want to solve the problem. But he probably was told by Schumer or somebody like that, some other lightweight, he was probably told, he was probably told, don't meet with Trump. It's bad politics. And that's part of the problem in this country. And he also talked about all of those leaks. So what can President Trump do in the short term about a stubborn bureaucracy hell-bent on blocking his agenda? And in the long term, will the president get the last laugh by just eliminating the EPA and its nearly 15,000 employees? That's right. 15,000 employees whose salaries you pay. Myron Ebel is Director of Global Warming and International Environmental Policy at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. He also led President Trump's environmental transition team. He joins us live now. This insurrection at the EPA, there were liberal government analysts quoted in the New York Times today saying this has never happened before where you had literally a couple hundred employees at the EPA trying to block the new boss from getting his job. Well, never before have we had a president who wants to fundamentally transform the federal government and change the course of the EPA and get rid of a lot of the regulations that they've been adding and adding for decades. So we're putting a spotlight on this tonight because the media kind of laughed it off when the president at the news conference was saying that the leaks we see in the intelligence community, we may see more of it at other federal agencies, that there are basically Obama holdovers who want to try to stop this president's agenda. You believe that? Yes, and I think at the EPA you have an entire civil service bureaucracy where uh, they are opposed to the president's agenda and they think that it's more important to support that agenda than to do their jobs. And so this idea of defiance or insurrection, I think, is, is quite possible. And I think, uh, you know, the, leader, the new leadership at uh, EPA, Scott Pruitt, the new administrator, is going to have to uh, work very hard to get everybody so, in line. And we wanted to dig deeper on the details. It's not just the EPA. If you look at uh, federal government agencies across the board, the big departments, these government employees gave campaign money to Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, in some cases, 94 to 6%. And if you just go down the line, look at this list. Agriculture Department, 99.4% of the campaign contributions from employees there went to Hillary Clinton. The Commerce Department, 98%. Education de Department, 99.7%. So when you say Scott Pruitt is going to have a job on his hands, the EPA was well over 90% as well. What are these bureaucrats going to do to try to undermine him and stop the president's agenda in terms of ripping out government regulations that the president says, you get rid of these environmental regulations, the economy is going to take off? Well, I think the problem is that the civil service has become largely a special interest agenda with its own, with its own agenda. They're supposed to be experts in administration who know how to carry out policies. So. Uh, it seems to me that they have a choice to make. Are they going to be professionals, civil servants, or are they going to be activists? If they're activists, they should either resign or retire. So is there a way for Scott Pruitt to drain the swamp, as the president talked about, over at the EPA? Because when you talk about civil service protections, to me that's code for they've got unions who are going to protect them and make sure that even if they're you know, trying to stop the president's agenda from inside the government, you can't fire them. I think that if there is direct insubordination, people who do not do what they're told to do, they can be disciplined or, in fact, terminated. I think the other solution is to downsize the agency. The fact is that the EPA has 
15,000 employees, but over the decades they have devolved more and more of their work to the states. So if the states are actually the ones trying to protect the environment, what are 15,000 people at the EPA doing? Well, I think a lot of them are pursuing their own agenda, and I think we can... And that agenda means issuing more government regulations? Yes, exactly. You increase the power of the EPA every time you, you have a new regulation that, that harms investment and kills jobs. A lot of what the EPA does today has very little to do with improving environmental protection. It has to do with increasing their power and their control over people. Now, to be fair and balanced, Scott Pruitt is somebody who, in Oklahoma, as the Attorney General, he has been, to say, a skeptic of climate change would be the understatement, perhaps, of the year. And so, when Christy Todd Whitman today was quoted in the New York Times, a moderate Republican, former governor of New Jersey, served as EPA administrator under George W. Bush, as you know, she said what it means is that it's going to be a bloodbath when Pruitt gets in there. She's not someone known for hyperbole. She's a moderate Republican. Well, what does a bloodbath mean to you? Well, I think Christy Todd Whitman was a go-along and get-along uh, person at EPA. She went along with, with the bureaucrats. More government and regulation. And I think, I think she wants to, to hype this because she, she represents the Republican base that really supports the status quo here. So bottom line, Donald Trump in the campaign said he wants to get rid of the EPA. He's been keeping a lot of these campaign promises, some to yes. his detriment politically, where yes. people are saying he's moving too fast. Bottom line, do you think Donald Trump, as someone who is in the transition, you think President Trump is going to try to eliminate the EPA altogether? Uh, I think we'll know fairly soon when we see his first budget request. He said he wants a 2% per annum decrease in federal expenditures, but he wants to increase military spending and keep entitlements. That means. Domestic Somebody's spending, going to be a loser. Domestic spending is going to have to go down a lot more than 2% per annum. So let's see what the hit EPA has to take. Yes or no? I've got 15 seconds. <laughs> At the end of Donald Trump's first term, will the EPA be eliminated? No, I think it'll take longer than that. So the bureaucrats will keep it going? Well, I think it's, it's a long-term process. We, my, my Renee Bell, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me, Ed.